Hey guys, what is up? It's your pal Dave from notesandvolts.com back in the lab for part three of Project Cheetah. So if you're brand new here and you're saying, Dave, what is Project Cheetah? Well, to get that answer, you gotta go back and watch parts one and two, and I'll explain the whole thing and show you what we've done up to this point. This video is a little different. It's all about hardware. So I have made a prototype for this project and it looks something like this. So this is the box I came up with. It's a lovely Hammond sturdy metal box with three foot switches, MIDI jacks on the back. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the tools and techniques I use to make it and how you can make your own. But before we get started with that, we gotta take a minute and thank our sponsor for this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for creative and curious people, such as yours truly. Explore new skills or deepen your existing passions. Personally, I'm interested in the music, electronics, and programming classes, and Skillshare has hundreds to choose from. I'm currently taking a really cool class called Productivity for Creators, Starting a Successful Side Hustle by Ali Abdal. It's a really cool class that teaches you how to grow your YouTube channel and become a better creator. Skillshare is designed for learning, so there are no ads ever to break your concentration. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. Click on the link in the video description and the first 1,000 of my viewers will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. So thanks again to Skillshare. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the final product. Um, you can see we got a nice sturdy Hammond box. Uh, so this should be road worthy. We have some cool, funky 80s inspired graphics. We have three foot switches. So these are momentary foot switches, non clicky style. So you just push them and let them go and they're off. Very nice, very fun to play with. We have two MIDI jacks on the back, uh, riveted in place. We have a power jack and we have three buttons, one for major ideas, one for minor ideas, one for dominant seven ideas. Now, if we open it up, here's the inside. So this whole project's based on an Adafruit Permaproto board. So these are, I find these very nice to work with. Uh, you can see the internal wiring. And pretty simple circuit, just a, an Arduino Nano optocoupler, few resistors, some wires, and uh, a diode, and that's, that's basically it. But anyways, let's take a look now at the process I use to make this lovely thing. All right, to start with, we're going to take our Hammond 1590DD box. Now you're gonna to wanna to print out the drilling guide at one-to-one -one scale, so make sure it's full size. Now there's two ways you can use this drilling template. You can either use the dimensions that are printed on, they're all in thousandths of an inch, or you can just cut it out to the uh, closest inside line and use the crosshairs to give you your drill center points. Just tape it right on the box. To start with, I'm going to tape the back template on the box and drill out the MIDI jacks and the power jack. A good way to get accurate results with this method is to take a center punch and punch the centers of the holes first, then drill them out with a small drill bit, maybe 1 8 inch, and then widen the holes with a step drill bit. Now we'll do the same procedure on the top of the box. Make sure the template is the right way round.
Next, I printed out the front panel graphics on my inkjet printer using some matte photo paper. Now I'm going to cut out the panel and cut the holes for the switches. I use a Silhouette Cameo cutting machine to do this. That's why I'm putting it on this weird backing sheet, but you can do this by hand as well. All right, the panel is cut and I just need to carefully remove it from the backing sheet. Now I'm going to use an office laminator to laminate the graphics and make them more durable. To attach the graphics to the enclosure, I like to use a product from 3M called 467 MP double stick paper. I just cut out a section slightly larger than the graphics and then peel off one side and stick it down. Next, I grab some scissors and cut around the edge of the panel, making sure to leave just a little bit of lamination sealed so it doesn't come apart. Now I'm going to attach the graphics to the enclosure using a piece of tape as a hinge. This will help keep the graphics in place because you want to make sure it's lined up perfectly. Here's a weird trick I use to help me line up the graphics. I take my phone and open up a flashlight app and put it under the box. That way I can see the outlines of the holes through the panel. This makes it easier to line everything up. Once that looks good, I'll pick up the graphics, peel the back off the adhesive paper and stick it down. Now I just need to cut out the holes with an X-Acto knife. And the box is done. Now that the enclosure is done, I can start working on the circuit board. I'm using an Adafruit half-size permaproto board for this project. If you check the download section for this project, I'll include a schematic and a wiring diagram if you want to follow along. I like to start by cutting and stripping the jumper wires. The general rule is to start with the shorter components and then move on to the taller ones. I'm using 22 gauge solid core wire for these connections. If you can, use different colors of wire to color code the different connections. I use green for ground and red for positive voltage. The technique I use for this is to cut and strip one end of the wire Put it on the board and then mark the length with a sharpie and then I can take the wire and cut it to the correct length and strip the other end. Now I'm going to take a brand new Arduino Nano and get it ready for programming. I always like to pre-program the board and make sure it works before I solder it because once it's soldered it's a real pain to get it off. This particular board comes with the header pins unsoldered, so you're going to need to solder them in place. It's very important that you solder the header pins straight or it won't fit into the board. So the best thing to do is place the header pins into the board and then solder it there and then you're guaranteed it's all going to fit. Once I get everything lined up, I'll hold it in place with some blue tape. Man, I just realized I use a lot of blue tape. I think they should sponsor the stream. Once it all looks good, I'll solder the corner pins on the top and bottom to hold it in place. And then just go down the line, soldering one pin at a time until you're done. Now I'll attach the two pin programming jumper. Hey, let's do the resistors next. I know I said you should install components from shortest to tallest earlier, but you know what? I'm feeling naughty today. Now I'll install the diode. Now remember the diodes are polarized, so you have to identify the side with the stripe. I'm gonna take the side with the stripe and leave it straight, and then I'll bend the other side right over. 
By doing this, the diode will fit in two holes right next to each other on the circuit board. Now I'll attach the chip socket for the optocoupler. Make sure you identify the side with the pin one mark. Now you could solder the optocoupler directly to the board, but I find them to be a little fragile and sometimes it's nice to be able to replace them easily. Finally, we'll just install the last few components and put the optocoupler into its socket. Make sure you locate the pin one mark on the chip so you know which way it should fit. Now that the board is done, I'm gonna get my external jacks ready. I like to start by bending the pins of the MIDI jack out a little bit. It gives me a little more room to solder. Now I'll attach the wires to the jack as shown in the wiring diagram. I like to use color-coded wires for this because it helps me avoid mistakes later on. Finally, I'll add some heat shrink tubing for extra safety. Once the MIDI jacks are done, I'm going to add two wires to the power jack. I like to color code them red and green for power and ground. Now, one thing to keep in mind is your power supply may have a center positive or center negative. So make sure you determine what you're using and then wire the jack accordingly. Finally, I'll attach two wires to each foot switch. Always leave your wires a little longer than you think you need because it's easy to cut them to size later. Now comes the fun part. We get to attach the MIDI jacks to the enclosure. I like to use aluminum pop rivets for this. When using pop rivets, always protect the enclosure with some tape because sometimes the rivet gun likes to jump a bit and it can scratch the finish. Don't ask me how I know this. Now I'm going to install the power jack. Remember to install the nut on the back of the jack before you solder the wires to the board because you can't do it after. Once again, don't ask me how I know this. Now I'll grab the circuit board and start connecting it to the external jacks. I'll be thanking myself for leaving the wires a little longer earlier. And finally, we'll install the foot switches. To secure the board to the enclosure, I'm going to use some 10 millimeter standoffs and some M3 6 millimeter long screws. All that's left to do is put on some stick-on rubber feet and screw the case together. So there you have it guys, the Cheater Project hardware is done. As always, I'd like to sincerely thank my patrons on Patreon. This is the end of the stream, Patreon Jam. Let's play a little music and enjoy their names. See you next time.